So let's take a look at using SEMrush for PPC campaigns. I just want to kind of walk you through a quick step-by-step -step tutorial of how I would jump into SEMrush and start jamming away and figuring out how I'm going to take over a space using Google Ads, most likely. Of course, you can do this on Microsoft Ads too, but most people are going to use Google Ads for PPC. And for this example, we'll just take a look at Best Buy, which is actually a pretty big company. But that'll give us plenty of data to look at, which is good. So if we put, um, if you don't already have an account with SEMrush, I'll put a link down below where you can get signed up for a trial. You can try all these different tools out and everything. Uh, but once you're in your account, there's some different options here on the left side. You've got like SEO, but we need to go over to the advertising. And then if you go to advertising research, put in a competitor. So let's say, for example, we want to start selling Apple products. <laughs> Okay, we got certified. We're going to be an authorized Apple retailer or reseller, or whatever they're called. And we want to compete against Best Buy and start selling some, some Apple products. So we could come in here, put Best Buy in, and start taking a look at some different information. So let's take a look at Apple products. So we'll filter this down to um, include the word Apple in it which is conveniently going to show us that there's 241 keywords, 12,000 clicks per month right now that they're getting. They're paying about 7,600 bucks a month for that traffic. And we can see this graph here, which by default, it'll be set to one month. I just set it to two years so we can sort of see what's been happening. Looks like there was a huge spike around the pandemic uh, where they were just cranking away the ads which makes sense uh, so again you can see trends on this which is really helpful too so being able to dive into what your competitors are doing and analyze how they're advertising currently especially if they've been doing it for a really long time super valuable because if google or if uh, best buy has been spending thousands of dollars a month on these ads forever then it probably means they're making money or else <laughs> they wouldn't keep spending money on those ads, right? So now we can start to look and see the different keywords they're using. So Best Buy, Apple Watch. So essentially people that are looking for Apple products at Best Buy, which would make total sense. You would probably want to make sure you're showing up at the very top of the search results when that happens if you're Best Buy. Um, but they're also, I'm noticing like AirTag, this is a new product as of the making of this video. I mean, not brand new, but it's relatively new, so it's somewhat popular. And you can see that's indicated by the search volume here, 74,000 searches a month. Uh, versus like free Apple Music, which only gets 14,000 searches a month, interestingly. So we can filter these by um, search volume if we want. Um we can kind of take a look at what terms are getting the most search volume or even the least search volume if we want like longer tail terms. So we could say Best Buy Apple lap Laptop Payment Plan. Um, that's pretty interesting. Buy Apple Pro. Yeah, these aren't very good keywords. So we would probably start with the terms that they're getting the most traffic from. Start taking a look at what they have going on. So we can expand this out. And in part, I like to take a look at the landing page. So when somebody is running ads, the ads themselves are important. We can take a look at those, but also where they're actually sending somebody is super important as well. So it's wanting my location information. I'm just trying to exit out of that. It looks like it's sending us to where we can buy Apple, Apple Air tags or even devices to put them in like holders and straps and different things tiles so it's kind of anything air tag tiles tags a bunch of different trackers that's where people that's where uh, best buy has been sending their google ads traffic when there's when somebody's searching for apple air tags and we could just mimic that if we wanted essentially right and we can see that Apple and Amazon are both up there doing the same thing. This would probably be a pretty competitive environment to go into when <laughs> we were talking about some of the biggest companies, but this should be something that everyone can 
wrap their mind around because everyone's familiar with these companies, right? So that's getting a sense of what they have going on in terms of the keywords they're using, the amount of search traffic that they're getting, like clicks that they're getting, right? We can see like how much, 666, oh no, the curse of the devil. Uh, <laughs> the percentage of their traffic, the costs, they're spending like $206 a month on this keyword. Um, tons of different information we can see about this. We can see the position change, where they're at in the search results usually. Uh, but we can also start taking a look at their actual ad copy. Meaning, like, what do their ads actually say? So if somebody's looking for an Apple Watch, we could actually include AirTag too if we wanted. Well, here's one right here. Apple AirTag available now. Keep, keep track of and find your items with AirTag. Super simple um, ad right here. And then if we click this drop down, we can also see what keywords they're showing this ad for. Again, very, very helpful. And the idea here is to just not reinvent the wheel, right? It doesn't make sense to just take all this time to come up with all this stuff from scratch if there's a bunch of companies that are already doing this hyper effectively you can figure out exactly what they're doing and then figure out how you can make your approach just slightly better and maybe you're a smaller company so you have more flexibility you can make your landing pages more custom tailored to the search results or something right like you'll be able to figure out based on doing this digging first of all kind of what direction you need to be headed in or what's working currently and then you can not reinvent the wheel. Instead, you can replicate what's already working, but uh, refine it so that it's tailored to your business and your needs and try to improve upon what your competitors are doing to make yours better, right? That's sort of the idea here. And if you don't have any tools to look at what your competitors are doing, it could be really difficult. I mean, you just sit there and try to search keywords and not really know what's going on. However, when you're able to see exactly what keywords your competitors are using, exactly what ads they're using, like say we want to sell some iPad Air cases, right? We can see the ads they're running, the keywords they're running it on, how much they're spending, the search volume. And then we can start to dissect all of this and put together some campaigns for ourselves that we want to go out and run. There are also ways you can look at multiple competitors too, so you don't necessarily just have to look at one competitor. We can come over here and see like, okay, so Samsung and Best Buy are probably gonna be pretty similar. They're gonna be selling a lot of tech stuff. Well, then we got Lowe's over here, which sells a ton of home, home related stuff and some tech stuff like washers and dryers that Best Buy also sells. So there's some overlap, but these two are gonna be much more closely related. Um, <clears throat> but we can see a whole list of competitors and then we can start taking a look like once we know what Best Buy is doing then we can take a look and see what Samsung is doing and dig into what they have going on with all of their ads and over time we'll be able to build out um, a lay of the land in terms of what is going on in this niche and what we need to do so that is essentially how I would use SEMrush to go through and dissect what's working in a niche, figure out what needs to be done. And then of course, there's tons of videos about how to actually create ads campaigns and all that. So I hope you found this helpful. If there's anything you did have questions about, please don't hesitate to reach out. You can just drop your questions in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to them there. If you're like most new business owners, you're probably struggling to get your online presence established, let alone get it to the point where it's bringing you a consistent flow of customers, right? So that's why I created this free course where I actually walk you step by step through the whole process of setting up your online presence. This is the same process we've been using for our clients for over a decade at one of my agencies. And essentially, I'm gonna show you how to set up an SEO-friendly business name right from the get-go, how to develop your website really quickly and easily, how to set up your Google Maps listing, start getting some Google reviews, everything you need in order to have a substantial online presence where people can actually start finding you and, and purchasing your products or services. <laughs> the best part is I'm going to show you how to do it in under a couple of hours and all for less than 50 bucks. 
If you're interested, I'll leave a link below where you can get signed up today. Make sure to check this course out for free right now because I'm probably gonna start charging for this at some point in the future. All right, I'll see you on the other side.